This is the audiocular aura and it's an impressive little dongle deck for many reasons but I also do have a few why I definitely don't like it. Um, I will get into that in a little bit. Thank you to the folk at Concept Card for making this review possible by sending me this demo unit. All thoughts and opinions are my own as always. So let's quickly jump into how this is built and it's unboxing. It's unboxing is fairly simple and to the point. Now it's very nice that they actually include a little carry case in this. It's big enough to carry the little dongle DAC as well as a set of IEMs which is a nice welcome. And it also does come with a little uh, USB-C to USB type A adapter as well in case you want to plug it into your uh, computer or your PS or something like that. So it's nice that it is included. When it comes to the DAC itself, well, it comes with a pretty tough looking cable that's, uh, you know, mounted between the DAC unit and the USB-C section. And of course, you will see the Aura branding on it uh, with the high-res audio uh, marking and the 32-bit mention with the 384 sample rate, it supports DSD uh, and so on. Now, it does uh, have the uh, Sirius Logic uh, DAC chip mentioned here as well, uh, it, which is a pretty good performer. Uh, and it does have a little button here that lets you sort of play and pause your music as well at least that's what it's done whenever i've plugged it in and one end is of course a usb type c uh, on this and the other side is a 3.5 mm female so if you do want to plug in a 3.5 mm set of iems there's no problem doing exactly that and of course the body of this is made out of some sort of aluminium alloy which is it does feel cool to the touch and this can warm up slightly when you are using it over a longer period of time so there's nothing to worry about uh, but its overall attention to detail i must say is pretty good uh, it definitely deserves to be uh, in the price range it is uh, with this kind of overall fit and finish and what makes it a little more interesting is that it does also link up to an app so this is something i never thought i'd mention a dac having an app it's it's part of a feature which is actually pretty cool so uh coming to the parts that i don't like now for one you have to get the my audiocular app i'll throw this up on the screen so you can see and as you can see right now it says no device connected now what i'm going to do is i'm going to plug this uh, the aura into my phone right about now it's plugged in and as you can see, it still says no device connected. Now, when I first did this, I genuinely thought there was something wrong with this little dongle DAC. I plugged it into my uh, Mac. I plugged it into, uh, I think I plugged it into my tablet or whatever, but it wasn't showing up anyway. I, I tried another phone as well. It just wasn't showing up anyway. No lights were coming on, nothing. It was just totally unresponsive. Anyway, I eventually said, let me just plug in a 3.5 mm into it. So I'm going to plug in the 3.5 mm of my EA1000s right now. And you, if you observe on the screen, as soon as I plug it in, uh, do you want to open Hibi? No. Uh, allow audio clear? Yes. Okay. So it only responds when you plug in a set of earphones or the 3.5 mm in. I find that a little bizarre, but anyway, that's how it works for one. And two is the other thing that I genuinely don't, didn't like at all and still don't. And honestly, I think for me, it would have been a deal breaker. This is actually not something that I would have wanted to buy for this specific reason. Um, it does come with these really cool features of the parametric EQ. Uh, you can go into settings and modify stuff. You can update it, reset it, all that sort of stuff. But you, you only get access to all the features only if you create an account. So you have to give your email address, set up a password and so on. Now, the thing is, well, what I strongly feel is the minute you spend on a brand like this, you're, you're already spending on the brand, you're spending on the product, you want to get the product for its features. And these are the features that are advertised. And as soon as you spend your money and plug it in and it says, hey, you need to sign in, I find this to be uh, very blatant uh, data farm farming. Uh, a lot of people don't like that. For them, it will be a deal breaker. But I haven't seen anywhere where it specifies that these features will only be unlocked if you provide an email address and so on. I think this is something they shouldn't do. Now, they do have a community tab. Now, honestly, if uh, you want to join the community and share, you know, parametric EQ sort of uh, layouts or whatever, uh, or just share EQs in general, just have the login for the community page. That's fine. But I mean, you cannot touch or use anything until and unless you do give an email address, which I find crazy. But anyway, I've done it for the sake of this review. So you guys know what it's about. So anyway, coming to the app, uh, you can go, of course, into the settings over here, which lets you play with a whole bunch of stuff. Now, it has a whole bunch of filters. And I must say, this is genuinely very impressive. But I, I have to say at the same time, 
there is no need to have put this behind like that wall of having to log in and so on. They should have just provided this. Uh, you've already bought the product. So you do get all these different filters. Uh, these are, it's very interesting to see that you're getting access to something like this at this price range. Stuff like this is normally only available in a much higher price segment. So it's pretty cool that they've made this possible. You can, of course, change uh, a few things. Now you have to sit and listen and figure out how you want things to sound. Uh, gain mode as well, channel balance and so on, which is also cool. Uh, then you also do have a mic option over here. Now, right now it is picking up from the microphone in my phone. So you can see the levels over there, but you can, of course, control the gain uh, over here as well if you want, which is cool. Uh, now, I do presume this has a microphone pass through. I do not have a set of IEMs right now that has a microphone. So I can't test this at the moment, uh, but I do presume it has a pass through because you can play around uh, with the intensity levels, of course, uh, the gain, uh, which is cool. And then the most Im impressive part is the parametric EQ. Now I have recently sort of checked out a parametric EQ on the Moondrop Space Travel 2. Check that TV out if you haven't already. Uh, but that parametric EQ is kind of all over the place. So this one, I'll tell you uh, very honestly, is done pretty well. Because if you do want to start playing around with certain things, certain elements with your with your audio, uh, it's, it's much easier to do. It, it does have a 10 band EQ. So I'm just doing this for example. You can play around uh, with your sort of gain over here. But you can properly sort of go into uh, each frequency range and modify every single element you want. The gain, the filter, the Q factor. This is what a parametric EQ should be. If you really want full control, uh, the full ability to really uh, sort of fine tune the kind of sound you want. So it's very impressive that this is able to do it. Now, if this is too much for you to do, they also do have uh, multiple presets from all the ones you see on screen. and you need to find the one that suits you best. And of course, what's also cool is you can tweak them in certain areas as well, which is quite cool. So for example, if I go to Pure, you, sorry, Pure is absolutely flat, which I, I do like, in fact. If you go to uh, Bollywood, you can go in and tweak these certain elements, which is also cool. Uh, it's not like you're locked into that specific preset. So it's really cool that you're able to do that. And then, of course, you can update it if there's a software update available. This is on the latest version as far as I know. And you can reset it in case it's got any glitches and so on, uh, which is pretty neat. And that's about it for the app. Now, on a sound front, this does come with some pretty decent hardware. It does have a Cirrus Logic DAC and a pretty good amp chip as well. Uh, and I will go into the details. There's a lot to remember, so I'm going to read it off. Now, it does have a frequency response of 20 hertz to 40 kilohertz, which is not bad. Its impedance range is 16 ohms to 600 ohms, and I'll say take that 600 ohms with a pinch of salt because it does have an output power of about 227 milliwatts at 32 ohms. So, I mean, if you're plugging in bears, uh, bear dynamics that are 250 ohms, 600 ohms, it's it's not going to do what it needs to do. You really do need kind of a desktop setup for that kind of stuff, but this will do very well with uh, IEMs. And then, of course, its decoding capabilities is it handles PCM 16-bit. It does a 44.1 up to 32-bit, uh, 384 uh, uh, sampling rate as well, DSD 64, 128, and 256. So it, it does pretty much everything you need it to do. Uh, but when it comes to how it sounded straight out of the box, well, um, if I'm being very honest, it did sound very sort of dead. It sounded very flat. It wasn't too exciting. It, it was kind of almost, um, I wouldn't say muddy, but very veiled with a lot of its detail. Uh, I wouldn't say it needed a burn-in because that usually uh, sort of leans more towards more mechanical audio equipment. Um, but I have found that uh, through the past few days of spending time with it, uh, it shines more when you start playing around with the parametric EQ. And if I'm being very honest, I logged into the app maybe two or three days after I first started listening to it because I figured that you know it must sound much better than it sounds straight out of the box. And very obviously, you really do need to go into the parametric EQ and use uh, the different presets or fiddle around with it yourself. The level of clarity and detail does open up that much more when you switch that or those modes on. Uh, now, that's a big reason why I strongly feel that you shouldn't have to log into this. You shouldn't have to sign in or give an email address and so on, because when you buy it, you buy it for the features, which is what you're paying for including the build quality and so on. But it's kind of this hidden thing that I'm not a fan of. Data farming shouldn't be done in these kind of situations. But anyway, 
sorry, I'm just veering off. But when it comes to the overall uh, detail, once you've got the uh, present, the the um, PEQs working uh, and so on, everything just sharpens up. It suddenly gets more focused, like it's on race mode, and that's the way it should be used. That's definitely the way you should plan on using this with the different presets. And when you move on to how it amps, well, honestly, for IEMs, it does a very good job. I have mainly paired it with my EA1000s. I've been using this off late. I mean, it's an older set of IEMs, but it's terrifically transparent. And it's, uh, I mean, of course, a little more expensive than everything in the budget range. But because of its transparency, I really wanted to try it out with this DAC to see the difference between how it sounds out of the box and with the PEQ. And it, it definitely, there is a, a, a dramatic shift. I wouldn't say it's night and day, but it's definitely much better posture once you get the PEQ working. Uh, so yeah, volume wise, I've never really gone past say about 25-30% uh, through my phone uh, with this specific um, uh, DAC amp. Uh, I have not been able to use it on my Mac because I have not found the app for the Macintosh. Uh, I think that they are planning on launching it for uh, iOS. It is definitely available on Android. Uh, but I don't think they're going to do desktop stuff, but I could be wrong about that. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments, of course. But yeah, all in all, it's 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 a pretty decent sounding little DAC amp for the price. I think they've done a pretty good job of including all these features, but it, it is at a certain cost, of course. That is after you even buy it, you do have to give your email address. Uh, but it is very capable. And by capable, I mean it really does put a lot more features into the hands of a potential audiophile or a beginner. The problem I find with this as well is the minute you give, let's say, a novice a little too much, uh, he or she is just going to get flustered. They're not going to know what to do. Uh, and the chances are with a PEQ, you can do more harm than good. Uh, there's a, a very high p potential of you just going way off uh, with how you need to tune it, how to balance stuff. PEQs uh, usually, at least b back in uh, a few years ago, were something more an audio engineer used because they wanted to really fine tune for mixing, mastering, all that sort of stuff. So the fact that it's in, in the hands of the consumer today at this price is, I think, quite sensational. But again, keep in mind, uh, you need to spend time with it to figure out what your sound is. Please don't go and throw a few things up and down and say, hey, I don't think this works well or it doesn't sound good. It can definitely sound good if you figure it out. But one thing I will mention, one thing I did find while shifting between the different uh, uh, presets is every time I shifted over, it's like someone was unplugging and plugging in uh, a cable without cutting the gain or the volume. It's like somebody's unplugging things out of a mixer and plugging it back in. It's not exactly a smooth, you know, a roll off and then it starts with something else. So it's not an immediate cut off and it hands over to the next preset. It's always like there's somebody unplugging and plugging something back in without reducing the volume. So there were times when there was like this loud sort of bang or thud through the IMs, much louder than what my volume was set at. So I think these are things that need to be worked upon uh, by the brand and of course, to make it a little better uh, with its general performance, this is not, not something that should occur when you're shifting between presets. But all in all, I would say it is definitely a very impressive little affordable gadget that has PEQ capabilities and I would I definitely recommend it, uh, especially if you're somebody who likes the brand, if you do have other audio killer products and you've enjoyed them in the past and you do want to get this, or if you just want to dabble with a PEQ, this is the way to do it. Of course, at the cost of handing over your email address to sign in and get access to all these features. Otherwise, you don't get it. Anyway, moving on to the price. If you do want to pick this up, uh, I will leave the link down below. Uh, you can uh, buy the, well, it does have an MRP of about 3,899 rupees, but it, at the time of shooting this video, it is going for about 2,399. So honestly, considering the overall build you get, um, the uh, aluminum alloy finish, uh, the pretty well braided, uh, the finished quality cable you get, I think the USB-C is kind of a, it looks like a gold plated finish. Uh, it's, it's all in all a good, uh, a well built little unit. Uh, and I think the biggest plus point is the PEQs, but again, at the cost of handing over your email address. So that's for you. I think this is a great set to go for, a great little DAC amp to go for. Uh, so anyway, that's my review on this uh, little DAC amp. And I do hope that I have helped you understand this a little bit better. Uh, but of course, thank you for tuning in for some sound advice.